And in fact, uh, the Hydro opened for business last September when Rod Stewart had the place rocking earlier on there. Uh, and actually, it's rocking the last couple of days. The gymnastics tickets were amongst the very first to be snatched when they first went on sale. And I know that uh, Beth Tweddles managed to squeeze in there, as indeed has our Matt Baker. They are in there waiting for us. And in fact, Matt, we've had a lot to celebrate, clearly with England's gold medal in the men's team and Scotland's silver. But there was a very great concern about Sam Oldham there after that vault. Have you heard any more about his condition now? Well, Hazel, as it stands at the moment, we're waiting to hear from the results of uh, an MRI scan. Sam has gone off and basically we're expecting the results very shortly he was due to have that scan at four o'clock but um, it was a really really difficult landing that he took a lot of pressure and a lot of stress went through that left ankle didn't it Beth I'm just talk us through what happened on vault. Yeah he was doing a really difficult vault it was a handspring double front with a half turn he just came in slightly short and landed with his full weight on that ankle and actually his ankle went into the mat so we can't see what actually happened. I mean he did um, get a lot of flight but they tried to squeeze in a lot there's the yeah, half turn and just I mean he knew straight away it didn't feel right and Sam never reacts like that and when one of our top gymnasts straight away pulls up the coaches and medical staff luckily we have brought our own team out here so yes. they're straight on it they know exactly what Sam's like as an athlete and how he reacts to injuries so. and really such a disappointment for him himself because from an individual perspective it was going so well for him he was looking forward to the all-around competition and made finals himself he was and he's been he was in floor final and he's come back to form of late and it was going to be an interesting all-around competition between himself and that's Max. it and we had this feeling didn't we that this was Sam's year because because yeah. for a while he's been a little bit inconsistent but seemed to be hitting really well. Yeah, he had great results as a junior. He was part of that winning team in um, London. But yeah. obviously he hasn't had maybe the individual results that he'd hoped for. But he seemed to be training so well leading into this competition. He picked up the silver at the Europeans on high bar and you could see that confidence within him. Yeah, and overnight, I mean, the interesting thing about this qualification and team final is that it's been split over two days. So the men did three pieces yesterday, another three pieces uh, today. And overnight, the British, well, the England team were leading by six marks. It is a massive leave. And it would have been very strange for our gymnasts to have finished a competition halfway through, yeah. have to go back to the village, all the distractions, and then have to go to bed knowing they've got to get back up and do another three operators. So it will have been strange for them, but they've got so much experience on that team that it wouldn't have phased them. It's, it's kind of early to say it because the team competition isn't officially over yet, but really the teams that are to come cannot challenge for that medal. So England beat Scotland by nearly 10 marks. It was quite an extraordinary performance. And thinking of the England team from a woman's perspective as well, I mean, they arrived with a similar dominance even on just the first two pieces yesterday, Beth. Yeah, they had a mark and a half lead. Um, there was a few wobbles here and there, but we still had that lead going into today. So obviously that gives them the confidence and then we've just got to keep clean and solid on beam and floor but Australia and Canada they'll be out there to fight they yes. Australia performed I think a lot better than they thought they would and Canada maybe were quite disappointed with their performances well the Australian women they put out a good score on bars to start yeah. with yet they came to vault and it was all a little bit disappointing. Yeah, unfortunately, Lauren Mitchell, who was first up for them, has been struggling with her vaults in training, and she's got a bit of a twisting issue. So they just decided, rather than risking injury with her, just to play it safe and just do the straight. And then their other two were very weak vaults, but um, yeah. they are known primarily for their beam and floor. So it'll be interesting to see how it pans out today. But psychologically, I mean, how would it have affected you having that break overnight? Because really, two pieces to come out and do, especially vault, it's over so quickly they were hardly in the arena yeah it is very strange i mean i've never had to compete like that the only way you can relate to it is a world cup where you yeah. do literally do each piece at a time so for like rebecca downey she didn't have vault to warm up she doesn't have floor to warm up today she's just literally got one piece a day so for yeah. her it's just a case of keep my mind focused and obviously we've got uh bars to come i mean is it enough of a gap that mark and a half if England can go clean on beam, then yeah. I'd say 100% yes, but we've just got to take it uh, step by step. Gymnastics, that's the beauty of our sport, you never know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, well, as we said, there's still a few teams to come out on the men's side, and they're kind of running the women's and the men's at the same time, so that you can hear the cheer for uh, a lot of the male gymnasts uh, that are coming out now. There's a mixed group in there, but now it's time for Scotland to take 
to the Hydro Arena and just listen to the roar as Cara Kennedy, Erin McLaughlin, Amy Regan, Emma White and Carly Smith enter here. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about their competition because they don't quite have the difficulty, but they've got the consistency. They don't, but they performed excellently yesterday. Their routines maybe not don't have that high difficulty, but they cleaned it so, it uh, performed it so cleanly that the judges didn't have anything to take off them. Yeah. They've got experienced members. Emma White was part of the World Championships team in 2006. She's done the Commonwealth Games. Unfortunately, in Delhi, she actually got injured and she made the decision to sort of come back here and it's in Scotland, why wouldn't you? Yeah, for sure. Well, this such a tentative piece of apparatus to start on is Beam and knowing, Beth, knowing that all eyes are going to be on them as it goes quiet and they're just focusing on that beam that is just the width of a house brick. I mean, how is that going to be? It is. I mean, obviously, it's helped. The fact that they were here yesterday, they did vault and bars and they got used to that atmosphere. So actually, it will be a little bit ne less nerve-wracking going up on that beam today. And I saw them in the village the other day. They were just so excited. They were loving the village. They were loving the atmosphere in the gym and just being able to perform against some of their sort of idols. Yeah, so vault, bars, beam, floor, the usual order. Yeah. How difficult is it to start on beam? For me, it was the most difficult. I was mean, it? it's 10 centimetres wide. It's, yeah. it's not natural, but um, for some of those gymnasts, they love the beam and they flourish on it. Well, they're uh, the team from uh, Malaysia that will be taking uh, to their piece of apparatus. We've got Nur Alina Azumi, we've got Yu Tang Ng, Farah Ann Abdul Hadi, and uh, Tracy Ange as well. So still, it's all to play for. I mean, going further down the ranks, it's just, just a wonderful, obviously, platform for these gymnasts to be travelling from all over the world to this Hydro Arena. And it is, it's world-class, this. It is. I mean, you, we're using it for our World Championships next year, so you can see the state-of-the-art facility it is. And like you say, even for those gymnasts that maybe they're not the top of the sport, but this is their Olympic Games. It's the closest they're ever going to get to competing at that level. So it's an amazing opportunity for them. Well, it is indeed, and you can see the Scottish girls there just going through the final preparations for them. They all get just a few minutes just to get themselves accustomed to the piece of apparatus. You can see there's a lot of chalk marks on there as well. Gymnasts pacing out the run-up for their tumbles on beam. Cool. And you can see the nice Scottish blue nails there. Um, obviously, the gymnasts, they all have their own marks on the beam, and you're allowed to just put a little bit of a chalk mark so that when they go for that all-important dismount right at the end, there's no mistakes on where they take off for the dismount. Well, just to uh, give you an idea of how this will work, just it's four gymnasts up and three performances count. And then they'll move on to their final piece of upraise, and that will be the whole competition over with. And then we will see England enter in alongside New Zealand and then Canada and Australia. But it looks like we're going to be starting. Oh, Wales the at this point, out in front, 160.095. Scotland in second, South Africa in third, Singapore fourth, and Malaysia in fifth place. So, yeah, Scotland just widening the gap between the countries that are below them there. But would you have preferred to have started on floor and gone on to be more the other way around? I think for me, I would prefer definitely to get on floor, especially with the atmosphere, especially for those Scottish. You can feel the atmosphere and yes. like they will have taken the adrenaline. And even Amy at the end of her floor routine then, normally you're a little bit tired, but she still had that power and just had to try and control it. Well, this is the point and this is what England have to do right now because they've got a mark and a half to play with. Yeah. It's not a huge amount when you look at the deductions that you can get up on beam. Uh, but as far as far as far as floor is concerned, from a world champion's perspective, how do you manage to contain all of that energy? It's very difficult. Once you're into that home crowd environment, you pick up on that adrenaline. It's the one piece of apparatus you can actually hear the crowd and take their energy and yes. you do have to sort of take a step back but I mean most of the England team they're experienced internationals they know what it's like to compete at a major championships let alone home championships so um, I'm sure we don't need to worry about that. No, and them. four of the five were in that European silver medal winning team exactly, so vastly yeah. experienced from England's perspective. Yeah and then obviously I think they're actually going to be coming out onto beam but they've been performing really well on beam so uh, fingers crossed for them. Yeah so there are uh, the list of the British women Ruby Harold, Hannah Whelan, Rebecca Downey, Claudia Fragapani and Kelly Sim. Just a word on uh, Claudia Fragapani, who has been a real injection of something into the English and, of course, the British team. Yeah, it's her first sort of year on the international scene. She was injured last year, but 
You can see she's brought new life to the team. Obviously, most of the other t members, they're experienced. They know what it's like. Having someone new on your team, you forget the whole experience and how new it is and how exciting it is. And I think that's brought it back to our England girls. And, I mean, they came in here yesterday with an incredible amount of belief. Yeah. And let's just hope that that continues here as the England girls take to the beam. So, Ruby Harold, now 18 years old, starts things off. England. England came out on top in the battle for gold in the men's gymnastics team final, as you saw, as Scotland landed an historic silver medal, their first ever podium finish in the competition. So, yes, we are just still waiting for Olivia Vivian's score. She fell off, so really there's, there's no chance <laughs> of that, that counting at all. But Beth, I mean... We were taken aback. I think the, the Welsh team sat us so somewhere up the top there, looking down. What a competition for them to be watching, wondering what the outcome would be. It was it's so exciting to watch. You obviously had that competition for first and second, and then obviously that sort of battle for third and fourth as well. And I think it was more nerve-wracking watching Canada-Wales than it was watching England-Australia. And that really is the hardest thing. When you're, you're in an arena where you're not actually competing, you just have to put down your score, walk out and just win hope and keep everything crossed yeah I mean Wales have had a long wait they did it this morning and then you could see them nervously sat there and even when they were confirmed as third half of them knew half of them didn't so they were just waiting for that confirmation yeah. and what does it feel like to be a first and to make history it's an amazing I mean Tracy Skirton has been working with that team for over eight years now and yeah. it means so much to her you could see her she was in tears at the end of their competition and the girls have worked so strong and you couldn't have asked any more of them over this competition and you know we wondered whether or not Australia would be strong enough were you slightly disappointed with what you saw here today do you know what? I I saw them during podium training and I wasn't that impressed that you could tell they were struggling but actually yesterday they came out and performed their best so um, I wasn't quite sure what they're going to come out with but as soon as that first floor team went up you kind of thought okay maybe it's not going to be their time and I think the difference was six marks in the end well this is the thing I mean overnight England had the lead of a mark and a half and then they win the competition with just another two pieces yeah. with a dis with six marks I mean yeah. that just goes to show what what's happening within British gymnastics and the whole nation we have just got so much depth and strength I mean Claudia herself putting that 14 7 on floor that was nearly a mark and a half what above what anyone else was posting on floor so yeah. that gave England a massive advantage but I mean besides Lauren Mitchell we saw nearly every Australian gymnast step out of the area and I mean it's not as if this is a different sized floor area to what you'd be used to so what what do you think's going on there you could just tell they were struggling I mean it was a case of we want to get to our feet if it means taking a step out we'll take the point one rather than taking the whole mark for the fall and you could see the coaches and the gymnasts at the side really sort of encouraging their gymnastic was performing but it just wasn't enough on the day and you could tell they just weren't competition fit on floor yeah well it's been since the year 1998 <laughs> since England took that that team gold what will it mean to the team and how important is this for them on that world stage it's it will mean so much to them I mean for every athlete your Olympics is your pinnacle but Commonwealth Games it is the friendly games and it's the one that you enjoy and you just want to be part of it yeah and what what is going on then within the camp in England what's the secret to this what appears to be a very slow progression but eventually kind of world dominance do you know what? it's confidence belief and hard work that's all it is and really I mean I, you're the one that kind of <laughs> laid down that path for many to follow and you are still very much involved aren't you within yeah, the team I mean obviously Amanda who was my personal coach she's now the national coach so she overlooks the Welsh team the English team and she's just working their ma her magic with them but obviously a lot of credit goes to their personal coaches they only go up to Amanda at the National Centre for camps their personal coaches are the ones that are in the gym day in day out doing the cr um, doing the hours well obviously this hasn't just been about a team final it's been about qualifying for the individual finals as well how much would they have focused on that going into this competition and how much would they've just got the job done and then see what develops from there to be honest because it was a team final normally a world or a Europeans it's literally just qualification but for the England team they really wanted that team title so their main focus would have been that if they had individual finals come off the back of it then that's a bonus
And I'm sure you will agree, this is a very tough schedule as far as gymnastics is concerned. To split the day anyway over two as far as qualification yeah. is concerned. Maybe you're not competing as one of the gymnasts, but you've got to, you've got to lift yeah. yourself emotionally, haven't you? To come in here, go to bed, try and get r what rest you can, come out again for the second day, and then, then there's the finals. Yeah, I mean, for some of the gymnasts, they're going to be competing over five days. For Max, example, he is literally going to have to go up, go down, go up, go down. And it's it's going to be mentally tough, but obviously they've got a lot of support behind them. Their personal coaches are with them. They're in the village. They've got all the Team England set up that gets them recovered, gets them prepared. As soon as this medal ceremony is over, they'll be back out into the village and resting and recuperating, ready for tomorrow. And as far as the British squad is concerned, I mean, let's look at Team Wales. Obviously, they're going to be training with the team as well. And how much yeah. will that have benefited? And what kind of difference do you think it's going to make in the future for the home nations? It's great for the home nations. I mean, Great Britain as a whole, you have Rhea, you have Jess. They've all been part of that national system, so they know what it takes to be at the top of the game. And Wales have obviously always struggled to come into the team ranks. When you've got the likes of Australia and Canada, it's hard to get into there, but sure. they've done amazing and made history. And I mean, what will it do for the confidence? Because Australia, they're not too shabby really on the world stage anyway, to beat a team like that with six marks, as you can see from the final result that's come up now. Look at that, England ahead of Australia. Wales look glorious. Don't they look glorious there in a bronze medal position? Well, they will be out very shortly to receive their medals. Isle of Man there in 10th, Northern Ireland ahead of them in 9th, New Zealand 12, Sri Lanka, Malta down in 14th.